stakeholders this is neha from webstack welcome to the very first episode of this node.js series so in this video we are going to talk about the basics of node.js what node.js is and why is it so popular among the web developers so let's get started for starting the video if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe to webstack and hit the bell to get all the notifications Now let's check out the million dollar question what is node.js so is it a framework or a language it's neither of them it's neither a framework nor a language it is actually known as javascript runtime so what do you mean by that runtime simply means an environment that is provided to a program so that it can execute properly So similarly this node.js is a javascript runtime which means that it provides a kind of environment so that javascript can run on different machines so javascript was earlier meant only for the browser or you can say the client side so javascript role was just to provide animations or interactions with your website like having a pop up somewhere or alert boxes or any animations of that kind is provided by this javascript but now its role is not only limited to the client but also it is used on the server side mainly due to this node js because node js provides this environment so that javascript can run outside the browser that is why we can run it on any machines on the network not only on the server but any machine though it can be your computer or any other machine in the network we can execute javascript outside the browser now so we can also call this node js as javascript on the server so now it is not limited to the client but it is now expanded with more functionalities that is given at the server side also this node js is open source and supports cross platform so now that javascript can be run out of the browsers let's try and understand what actually the client server model is so talking about client and server uh, we have clients and we access the browser so when we access the browser i actually provide the url on the browser so let's say i have some dummy url called mystore.com so now when i'm giving this url hitting this on the browser it will actually be going to the server where it will be converted into the ip addresses and all with the help of dns so i'm not going into that stuff right now so it is automatically converted to the ip address and now the server will actually access the database find the page for this mystore.com now after the page has been found in this database it will take the data from this database and will give response to the browser so response can be given either in the format of a page which can have html css and also javascript so i'm talking about browser side javascript right now so either a page can be returned or it can return some uh, json value and so on but in the earlier models the javascript was only limited to this browser side but now you can see it stands inside the server also with the help of node js so now let's understand the working of javascript to understand how this node js has emerged so javascript is basically a high level language which needs to be compiled obviously or it needs to be interpreted by some engines so there are a lot of javascript engines as you may have seen my uh, javascript series so i have talked about different engines that we are having to execute or compile this javascript code so we have v8 engine for the chrome and spider monkey for firefox and so on so talking about v8 engine it's actually built inside chrome by the google developers because of its speed the node js is coming into the picture 
So this V8 engine will actually transpile your JavaScript code inside your machine code and the Node.js. Now where does it stand inside this picture? So Node.js is actually built on this V8 engine which is really very powerful and because of which our JavaScript compilation process has immensely increased so the speed is ultimate of this v8 engine that is why this is so much popular and node.js is also using the features of v8 so your v8 is embedded inside the node.js and making it powerful so what is there in this v8 engine so actually it is written in c plus plus so let me tell you this V8 engine is having the C++ code bases. We don't need to really bother about that because we are not going to write these C++ codes. And this Node.js is actually taking the C++ code bases of V8 and adding some features inside this V8. Code bases can access your systems like they can access your file systems or databases on the server and so on which is not possible with the direct browser as you can see so browser cannot directly access your file system because of some security issues and also we can't directly access the databases so for that we need some server side languages to access these stuff so this is possible now with the help of node.js because it adds some extra features like it adds some modules to, to this C++ code bases and it adds buffer modules and uh, express framework and so on to this V8 engine. So now let's talk about the role of Node.js. So what is the capability of Node.js and where it can be used? So Node.js on the server side as we have already discussed it can access database services like it can insert into database update into database delete or it can also create the databases as well and also we will be handling the request and responses so if i'm giving some request for some website the server will actually respond me with the web page of that request and also we have some data validations uh, you can also provide validations on the browser side. So why we need this server side validations? So the answer is simple because developers can easily access your browser side code and they can make changes in that validations. You can have cross site scripting and all that stuff from the browser. But it is not possible on the server. So you should be having server side validations. That is why this Node.js will provide us data validations also we can do authentication part with this node.js also it helps in handling business logics so what do you mean by business logics so let's say amazon is announcing some discount or some sale for its prime members only so now the system needs to verify whether i am a prime member or not so that is actually a business logic so whatever company, the particular company is providing you the logic, their own custom logics it can be that your company is providing to you. Like I talked about Amazon Prime membership. So here I just want to make a point that other than server also, Node.js provides some of the capabilities like we can also create some utility or build tools. So if you have used React or Angular frameworks, you must have seen that you import some packages using npm so we can also create those utility tools or build tools inside node.js so let's see why we need node.js like ruby on rails we have python we have django all these things are available so why we need node.js so node.js is actually having a lot of third party packages so we will be dealing with these packages slowly in this series and you will find there are a lot of packages provided by this node.js so secondly it is single threaded so there is a lot to talk about this concept of single threading inside node we will see that in the later videos so i don't want to make this video a very complicated one so i will create a separate video on talking about the single threaded 
So for the time being you just need to know unlike Java languages which uses multiple threads for all the multiple works they need to do. Node.js only has a single thread and it executes all the multiple tasks with that single thread. So the next point is it is asynchronous and event driven. So I will not be focusing it right now in this video. So just wait for the upcoming videos because if I talk about it right now and you will just feel what the heck is Node.js. So we will be learning about asynchronous and event driven in details in the later videos. So it is really fast because it is based on asynchronous and event driven structure. And also Node.js is scalable. Scalable simply means that we can scale our application to a large number of users because I have already told you it has the capability to handle multiple requests at the same time. Now who uses Node.js? So Node.js is used by multiple giants that we have technology giants. We have PayPal, then we have Uber and LinkedIn, eBay and multiple like Netflix. We have Walmart. These are the major giants which are actually now shifting to Node.js. So it is a really popular language. And why is it popular? I'll tell you in some time. Now where you can use this Node.js. So Node.js can be used in browser based games. The next kind of application that we have is live streaming. Whenever you find any data intensive work, you can simply use Node.js without giving it a second thought. Because in data intensive applications, you simply need to either fetch the data or you need to send some data. Uh, so data IO is involved a lot in Node. So Node.js will perform efficiently in that case. So we can use it in live streaming and processing applications as well. Also, we can use it in chat box because we have web sockets streams inside this Node.js. So Node.js can also be implemented inside single page applications. Let's have a look on some gray areas. It does not work very well with heavy computation tasks. So whenever a lot of calculations is required in your application, you should avoid using Node.js. So it works well in data intensive applications because of the asynchronous nature. So don't worry, we will do it in the later video. Callback hell is something which is related to uh, promises and async. So we have a lot of callbacks in asynchronous programming. So that is why we actually uh, just get into this callback hell like nested callbacks we are having so much uh, we just get inside that and it's really difficult. So the other gray area is it really doesn't work well with the relational databases. Actually it works very good with Mongo like NoSQL databases. So this is one of the gray areas of Node and then we have unstable APIs. So there are a lot of APIs inside Node.js but it gets on changing day by day. So we call it as unstable. So every time a new changes are made, you need to update your API. So that creates a hustle in your program. So is there any alternatives to Node.js? Of course, we have many alternatives for server side languages. Like we have Python, we have ASP.NET, then we have Ruby on Rails as well as PHP and many more. Then why Node.js? Because Node.js uses its very powerful tool that is JavaScript. And you all know that we use JavaScript in front end as well. And it will be easy for me to develop my server side coding also in JavaScript. So that is why it's really popular that you don't have to learn any new language to execute your server side code. With just single language, you can work on both front end as well as back end. So isn't that amazing that you don't need to learn any extra language for creating your databases. I hope you enjoyed the video and got the basics of Node.js. And if you do, please give the thumbs up to this video and share it with all your friends so that we can reach out to all other people in this web development. So we'll see you in the next video.